Brew Danger. He trying again, y'all. Yo. Hey. Hey. Hey, we can hear you now, man. Okay, I had to jump on my computer. Henry, thank you so I thought much. I could do it on the phone. Oh, it's all oh, right. Look at my African American. Man, it's here. good to look finally it. reach out to Are you. Are you the man. greatest? So, before I start, I haven't worn this since JDF died. I oh, saw wow. him two months, like I was telling you, before he died. Really? I did. And we talked, and he paused. And I was also a private investigator too. I worked in investigate. So you know when somebody pauses, there's something going on oh. in their life. You know, you guys start talking, and then you get that pause, and then you're like, yeah, and then they're like, oh, okay, yeah, yeah. It's like there's something <laughs> going on. So you and knew. I should have talked to him at that moment, and I knew I thought because I had to do chemotherapy. Oh man, you're so, a survivor. How you be cancer? Well, I have multiple sclerosis. I got diagnosed that year. I found out about a year and a half ago. Damn. And it was so bad that uh, it's so bad that they came up with an experimental program because there wasn't anything they could do for me. So they said, here's this program. You'll have to do the highest dose of chemotherapy we can humanly possibly give you without killing you. Damn. And then we do a stem cell transplant. Oh. And so I said, okay. So I had to live in the hospital for six weeks. Uh, couldn't go home and do that. So I saw him before that happened and he signed my uh, morpher and everything. And we, I, we, we knew each other. We had met several times before. So we, we knew each other and we had talked and I thought, well, here's the thing. I'm going to get done with the chemo. And then from there, I'm going to reach out to him and be like, I want to come to you as Jason, not as Tommy Oliver, not as JDF, but as Jason to help you. Cause I knew I had heard about him getting divorce papers by that time and everything. Uh -huh. And I thought that would, I said that that's the plan. But when I saw him, I said, and it happened. It was my first day of chemotherapy. That's Damn. when I got the news. Damn. That's when it happened. And my wife told me not to look at anything till she got there. Oh, and, wow. I was like, and I should have told him. So I haven't worn this hat, which I made. I made this hat and he autographed it. Let me see. Right here on the brim, you could see the signature. Yeah, wow. wow. So he signed it for me and that was the last time. So in tribute to him, I haven't worn these yet. Let me see if I can. I ah, made these. Look yeah. At, look at my man with the custom Air Jordan ones. Yeah. So I did these. And oh, this wow. is, yeah, this is for him. So I that wanted to nice. show that. So there's the nice introduction. Now let's get into cooking Brent and the nonsense. <laughs> Holy shit. Okay. <laughs> we we got to, I have been waiting. I, I wrote Brent in there too. I said, where you at, man? Where oh, you going? Oh, you got notes. Yeah. I, okay. Oh, yeah. And the look, look at my notebook. Oh. oh ho, ho, ho. Cook. Cook, cook. Look at the inside. <laughs> oh, Brent, you've met your match. Let's go. Let's hear what Drew Danger has to say. All right, everybody. Let me pop my neck right there. Let's <laughs> get to it. So, Austin, the the true story, the story that he claims. Remember JDF talked about him killing a guy on his birthday in the ring and all that. Yes. There is a video, and I will find it for you. So I want everybody to know I can back this up with videos. And guess what? It's not JDF talking about this. It's Austin talking about this himself. No way. Where this is the real story. Okay. So, all right, here we go. Austin claims at a 7-Eleven, if I remember correctly, it was at a 7-Eleven back in the day, there was a girl being kidnapped. Now, I think he might have known the girl. They, they knew each other or something. She was getting kidnapped, or harassed by some guys, and getting grabbed. He uh -huh. apparently sidekicked and fought off these guys and saved the day. And that is the true story about him <laughs> fighting people <laughs> that he claims. That's the one. And there's video on YouTube of him talking about it. He's like, yeah, I had to stop these guys, and I had to fight them off, and the police showed up and knew who I was. That is the story. Do you connect that now? The um, police. See, I need to find it. I need yeah, that story. I'm gonna, I'm gonna look. 
I'm going to email you tomorrow. I'm gonna, if I find it, I'm going to send it to you tomorrow. But he talks about, remember he said the police knew who he was. That's when he started saying that, oh, the police knew who I was and they knew me from the show. And I totally stopped these guys and they thanked me and they treated me like a hero. That's where that came from. Okay. And he told the story himself. So if anybody wants to say anything, put it on Austin because he said this. Number two. Another video from Austin, which you can get, and I'm going to send it to you, how he got the part of the Gold Ranger. And the caption in the video is him like this with a Ranger, Army Ranger tab next to him. It's black and yellow. Okay. okay. It's from his channel. And you know what he says in the video? I wanted the shield. I wanted to be the sixth Ranger. I wanted to chill by the pool. When you need me, I'll come. When you don't need me, it's cool. I'm going to stay by the pool. Now, who does he compare himself to in that? Oh. <laughs> oh, oh, okay. Okay. And, and he said, pay me. Cook. And I want to be a villain in Turbo. And I want to get paid this much. Go ahead. Keep who cooking. Who does he sound like? Who does he? Okay. He wanted to be J. Everyone wanted yeah. the JDF. And see, JDF didn't ask for that. He was just there. But this dude demanded that. That's how they brought him back. Pay me. Give me this. I want to be a villain in the movie. So that's number two. Number three. Here's the big one. I am one of those fans that actually got to meet Twee Trang. And a lot of people didn't. So when I met Twee, it was right after they just left the show and the movie was getting ready to hit. And it was when Austin had the goatee when they were trying to do that karate warrior thing. Okay. That's when I met all three of them at the same time, Victor Valley college, Southern California, San Bernardino, California, 1994. I was there. I was there. And here, here's the thing. The room was filled. I was 12. I was probably one of the oldest kids in there. Everybody was 12 and down. You emailed me already. Yes. 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 I, I, I was 12. I was there. And I asked Walter. Walter was cool. Talked to him. Twee was very sweet, very soft-spoken, very nice, very kind. Austin, from the time he walked out from the back of the stage, immediately, I've as 12 years old, I felt a bad vibe from Austin. I didn't like him. But I said, you know what? Let me give him a shot. I, and I took the microphone, and I got to ask him questions. So I said, why did you leave the show? Are you going to come back? And do you hang out with Jason David Frank? Oh, shit. Yes. You know what he told me? Oh, we have parties at our apartment, that apartment with the putties that they all lived in together and the actors and all that. And he's all, well, um, Jason David Frank, he's always working. He never really comes through. So I don't really see him a lot. That's what he said. That's, That's exactly what he said. And then when it got to, why'd you leave the show? Well, you know, we just felt we just needed to leave, you know, leave, leave, leave the show. Uh. Okay. See? See? And this was right after they left. So, see, people want to talk about all this stuff years later because he's now getting prepped and getting his story together and all that stuff. But if you catch him right when they leave the show. That's where the truth tends to come out. Ooh, See? I agree. I agree. That, that's the thing. Now, number four, everybody remembers Turbo, right? There is a special feature on Turbo called Austin's Chair. Does anybody remember this? Hey. Well, yeah, where, where Paul and Jason Narvi start going around and going, hey, have you guys seen Austin's Chair? You seen Austin's Chair? They talk to JDF. He looks hot and mad because (laughs) he knows Austin, they had catered to him and put up with his nonsense when making turbo. So when they talked to him, he's like, I don't know anything about Austin's chair. No, I don't want to talk about Austin's chair. No, leave me alone. You know? And you go to Austin. He's like, yes, I'm the star. Yes. Tyrannosaurus. Look, look at me, you know? (laughs) Oh, okay. So you stand by your values and you stand by not, coming back on the show and you left with dignity and all this stuff like that, but you came back for Zio and you cut that deal for turbo and you sure rubbed it in and you took the money. You took the money, got a fresh new haircut, was hanging out by the pool and everything. Right. (laughs) See, that's the thing. He says all this stuff, but 
didn't you come back to the show? And and then didn't you do the Turbo movie? And then didn't you come back for Forever Red? And then later on, didn't you come back? What was that for Beast Morphers? Okay. So you dealt with Saban how many times after you left the show? Oh, okay. At least Walter could say he never came back on the show, right? Ooh. <laughs> he, he, Austin came back on the show. Wait, wait. No, I take that back. They did an episode where they showed the pilot for the first time. Remember the original pilot with Audrey Dubois in it? Yes. They showed that. Um, they showed that on Fox years later and Walter and Austin hosted the show after this was years after they left Mighty Morphin. And that's when we all saw the first pilot with Audrey Dubois. Okay. That's the thing. And here's the other thing. Austin for years has said in quote that the five of us started it and Jason David Frank was never on the show. I worked in movies, okay? When you tape a TV show, everybody is pretty much there from the beginning, right? Yeah, yeah. JDF said, yo, I was there yeah. from the beginning. I was walking around. There, I was watching them that's film. That's right. He was there. And to prove it, when he told the story about how he selected Twee, yeah, he you said- had him go select Twee. Okay, so check this out, Henry. You're going to love this. They already taped the pilot, right? Pilot uh-huh. was already done with Audrey Dubois. Audrey Dubois left due to pay disputes, right? She wanted more. They said no. So she was out, right? Yeah. Austin was in that, right? So Austin, what original five? Are you talking about Audrey Dubois? Because if you're talking about Twee, which he was insinuating, Twee was yeah. when Power Rangers really kicked off. But the truth is, is when Audrey was there. If you want to count it when Twee's there, cool. But guess what? <laughs> he was there too. So that's a lie. And there's Ooh. set photos of JDF on set before he appeared in his episodes, wearing a green shirt, walking around, looking on set. Uh, okay? Look, hey, he, hey, Drew, he, bringing up the facts. No, I'm, bringing, I'm bringing the facts with this one. And here's the thing. JDF tells the story of Austin's fakeness many a times, many a times. And here's the thing. This is the thing. Austin has always been jealous and always had a problem with JDF. Yes. He's never, he's never liked him. So when that whole thing came up about we're going to go and strike and leave the show Let and him cook. join union and we're going to do this and get a lawyer and it's going to happen. Why would JDF join with somebody that he never liked from the beginning? Oh, yes. I remember the story. He was like, yo, I went to shake his hand and he didn't shake my hand. That's, and that's he changed the story his name I got too. To Jason, yeah. To uh, Jason, uh, Jason, Austin St. John from yeah. day one. Day one. And you know what? I'm going to add to that story. You know what he said? Because his name is really Jason Geiger, right? Yeah. He said, Jason, this is Jason. And he went, oh, man, not another Jason Narvi, me, him, uh, automatically. And wouldn't shake the hand, right? Yes. That's what happened. So from that moment on, they had problems. And it wasn't Jason David Frank's fault. It was Austin's fault. He shoved him to the corner. So why would Austin go to him to ask for him to join this thing of union and getting more money and all that. And the only, if he did, the only reason he did is because Jason David Frank held the cards. You see, uh, he was the popularity. He was the show. So if we get him, whether if I hate this guy or not, he's going to get me paid. See, if he did ask him, it was for that. But if he didn't ask him, that means he didn't join that union thing. And JDF said, yeah, I didn't really get with that. Which means I didn't join that. Yeah. Which means he probably didn't ask him because he already knew he ah. wasn't going to go down there. See, that's the thing. Amy and Dave, maybe you could kind of talk to them. Maybe. Right? But him, he already knew. They didn't like each other. They never liked each other. <laughs> it didn't work. <laughs> and it was Austin's fault. 
Because if he was cool to him from the beginning, they'd have been fine. It was Austin thinking he was the stuff. He was thinking, oh, I got the most martial art experience. Nobody's got anything on me. <laughs> and then this guy showed up. Yeah. Just like when you see him in the show. Oh, man, that guy looks pumped, right? That's what happened. The same thing. So, see, that's the thing about it. And I got something else that you're going to love. I don't know if you uh, You this. cooking, so keep, keep I'm going. I'm cooking. Do you know about the video Austin did at a convention where he's showing a submission? He's, he's, he, it looks like he showed a submission hold at the time um, with a young lady. He has a lady and he's showing her a hold. And he's like, yeah, I like to do this. And he's like, you know, like martial artists that got long hair. He's like, you have to grab the long hair. And I call it a B-grip. Did you see that? No, I did not. He said, I like to call it a B-grip. Oh, like a bitch. I hate long hair. I like to grab the long hair. I like to twist it. And I saw it when JDF first saw it and said, look at this video, guys. He's like, come at me, bro. Come at me. Like, you're you're (laughs) clearly calling me up. So see, what's that all about? So not only was he talking trash, but he was calling him out in so many ways. But see, the thing about Austin is he'll say that stuff, but then step back. He'll say that stuff. And then step back every time. When the fight initially happened, that JDF got him paid, was getting him paid, and everything to do a professional fight, have him train up, lose some weight, and then they were going to fight and all that. Yeah. He never responded, did he? No. JDF he went everywhere. As you said earlier, he, Walter, he said, What's Austin's number? Yes, yes, yeah, yes. Let's talk about that fight. Where, where's he at? You yes. guys are cool. Where's he at? <laughs> yes. Austin, nothing. Austin, <laughs> never. He never showed up. He never made it known. He didn't say anything about it. People asked him about, oh, well, you know, it would just be a friendly fight, you know, and we just laugh. And we Bro, did you listen it. to the tape? Like, Drew, yeah. has, <laughs> Drew has the, 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 the inside. Uh, and guys, yeah. <laughs> all this is on YouTube. All this is on YouTube. You guys can find it anywhere on YouTube. It's out there. It's Yo. no secret. It's Drew. just this. You Austin fans don't want to be honest. JDF fans, at least we could say we're honest. You don't want to be honest about it. You guys believe Austin out of shape, looking chunky, hasn't trained. I'm a martial artist. I've been doing a long Let time. Him cook. I work out every day. Holy okay. Shit. He hasn't been training. He hasn't been doing it. And he definitely not been eating right. He's been eating McDonald's and stuff filled with lard because that's why he's so big. How long has he been on the circuit? Five years, six years, seven years, eight, something like that. I think it's been about eight years, right? He's been on the circuit. Nine, I think nine, but yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe nine. And nine years, he hasn't gotten in shape and lost weight. When he showed up on Beast Morphers, what (laughs) did he look like? What did he look like? (laughs) Okay, what did Jason and Frank look like? What did Jason Scott look like? (laughs) Right? What did David Yost look like? They they look suit ready. They look like they could fit in the suit still. Yeah. His yeah. wife is like, yo, you cooking too much, Drew. Calm down. <laughs> they can still fit in the suit. He Austin, he couldn't fit in the suit. Uh, I mean, that that's, that's a stunt double. Come on. The whole time. Even Steve Cardenas came back to the show, was in shape. Right? Catherine Sutherland came back in shape. Right? Okay. Why is he the only one out of shape? And he's the one that was known for being the biggest. Remember? Now I got the muscles and I got the power, right? <laughs> oh, okay. You don't have the muscles and you don't have the power right now. Looks like you got a Subway sandwich made by Jared in your hand. Oh, shit. That's what you got. Let him cook. <laughs> Just tell the truth. See, th- th- that's the problem. Oh, my God. Oh my God. They, they don't, he doesn't tell the truth. He doesn't tell the truth. He's been lying for all these years. Oh, you showed shit. it today in your videos. He's been lying all this time. Why the heck does JDF got to pay Walter $1,500? For what? He got to pay $1,500 to stop you guys from messing up your own careers. See, if you had listened to JDF, you guys would be making double the money. That's what he was trying to tell you guys. If, he, if they had listened to JDF, they would have been making double the money. That's the truth. They would have been making double their money and they would have had a better setup. But no, they had to do, like you said, they asked to get paid for five star hotels. They asked for golden shoes. They asked for all that stuff. 
right? Yeah. He was saying, don't do that. They're they're not going to like you and they're not going to want you to come back. Don't get guaranteed contracts, you know, because even if they guarantee that money, what you're missing, they're not going to want you to come back because you're not going to be able to make that money. That's what you're telling them. They'll yeah. honor that, but that's also a sign that you can't come back because they don't want to pay you. If they have to pay you an additional 20 grand and you only made five, they're not going to want you to come back. They're going to lose money. So they're like, well, why do we want this guy here next year? Because he's going to lose money. So, oh, man. you know, the thing about that, Austin Austin has been lying. And I'm surprised by Walter because I thought I thought Walter would be more upstanding than that. Really? I thought he would be. I really thought he would be. He was in a bind. But he was, he's I'm in a bind, him man. hanging around Austin has not helped him. And if Twee was alive, if Twee was alive today, we'd know the whole story. Oh, yeah. Because she was cool with JDF and JDF always looked after her. So she would have told the truth. You have to think about that. And she would have known both sides. All the time. See, that's the thing. Yeah. Because yeah. she hung around those guys and she hung around those guys. And she was tight with Amy Joe, So she would have known like all oh, whatever you want to know about Amy Joe. Yeah, she was she, the, uh, the, the linchpin that held everyone together. She was. <laughs> And that was that was the thing. And and Henry, I'm going to tell you if you haven't seen it, um, I believe it was on Nakia and Catherine's show. They interviewed. I think it was them. They interviewed. <laughs> they interviewed her uh, friend who was in the car that survived the accident. Yeah, she's paralyzed yeah. now. Yeah, I saw. Yeah. It. I, sh- I showed it during the Yellow Ranger stream. Yeah, yeah, that was that was the trip. But the thing is, you know, guys. You guys, a lot of you Austin fans, you guys are looking at the TV show saying, well, you know, Austin, you know, he showed up with the Tyrannosaurus Rex and, you know, he he bit Tommy with it. You know, it's like, dude, dude. <laughs> hey, TV shows, a TV show. Reality is reality. And reality is Jason David Frank holds many more titles than Austin could ever hold in his life. And he stepped in the cage and won. That's not easy to do. Do you know he has the same title as Chuck Norris in the martial art community? Yeah, mm-hmm. it's called it's called Henshi. Yeah, he, I saw him. I think he went to Thailand or Brazil somewhere to get certified for. It. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. I I, uh, I I showed it briefly on here. Yeah, he holds the same title as Chuck Norris. He has yeah. the respect of one of my trainers, Master Jeff Speakman from The Perfect Weapon himself. He was in competitions when Jeff Speakman was there. So he has the respect of all the top people in the martial art world. He stands with them. Where's Austin? If you look up Austin, you don't see one martial art record. You look up Jason David Frank, you see every title, every competition, everything. You can look it up. You can find it. You don't find one for Austin. Not one. And and Austin fans go, oh, he, he lost it. He lost his black belt. <laughs> When he was traveling and he was in weight and he used it to wrap up somebody's leg, he used his black belt to wrap up somebody's leg when he got hurt. You know, see, they, they make up little silly stuff. Like he used that. as a turn kick. Turn yeah. Kick. He used the tourniquet on his leg, you know, and he, he was a hero. So he did everything he could, you oh, know, to put that together. And he saved the guy's life. And, and he used his Red Ranger helmet to hold the blood together in the body. It, that's awesome. See, he, oh, look up his record. Austin fans, where's Brent? Where's Brent? Brent, <laughs> I challenge you. Show me Austin St. John's martial art record. Show me where he got his belts. Who trained oh, him? Show shit. me. Show he me. Show me. I, I want to see. I want to see this. He'll say. <laughs> you guys make it sound like he's got magical powers and he's going to beat somebody that was, that was signed by uh, Tap Out and <laughs> holds all these top martial art records that you can see and that are proven. How is that possible? Yo, you are cooking. Oh my the I'm dog. Telling you, man. The, do- the dog we need to find the video of the dog story. That's what we need. We need the the dog saved his life and uh you know, he was passed out and the dog licked his hand to keep him from going to sleep and you know, he's alive because of the dog. We need to we need to find that. I was, wasn't that the one where he was living out of his Jeep? I don't know, man. It's so I, many I remember he did Austin one. Saint he had John a dog stories. in his Jeep or something, and he was like living out of his Jeep when they found him. 
for the Gold Ranger, like when he, when they asked him, like, oh, when, where, where were you when you were doing when they called you about the Gold Ranger? And he was like, I was living out of my Jeep. And I think he said he had a dog with him. It might have been that story. If that's the story, I think I know which video that is. Oh, um, yeah. I we, can, need, we need those videos, man. Just when y'all thought Ranger streams were going to go away, uh, Drew is like, nah, nah, nah. Here's here's the proof. Here's the proof. He, gonna, he Hopefully he sent them to me. And Austin's just jealous because he could never really look good in the gold shield. Ooh. There was only <laughs> one. And as a second, Zach looked good in the in the gold shield. He did. <laughs> but Austin's just jealous that he could never look good in that gold shield, man. He couldn't wear the gold uh, because he had to be saved. Wait, wait, wait. Someone said they emailed me the dog story. Uh-oh. Melissa, See? resend it. Melissa, resend it. Resend it. See? Uh, I'm telling you. This oh, dude. Shit. <laughs> and I'm going to tell Brent. Brent, you better be listening to this. Because I, I called you out. I, I got you set up early so you could come on here and I don't see you. Well, hey, so. Brent, Brent in timeout today. But we'll, we got we to gotta get y'all both up here at the same time. because you. I want Brent. I'm going to bring the Dragon Zord fire down on him like nobody's business. You tell him. Oh, look, I'm man. Coming it's, for him. it's late. It's late, guys. I really wasn't going to do this, but I saw a new face. I saw Drew, and then he started talking. And I realized I read your whole email. I don't know if I responded or not. Uh, uh, no, I, I didn't get anything back from you yet. But when you start, when you said you saw him at 12 and you met all three, I was like, oh, I read your email. I must have like typed up a response and yeah. didn't send it. Uh, but man, you came up with receipts and cooking. I mean, you don't got, you know, Brent will say you don't have the links to videos. So uh, I get that. those links. That's but my problem. If you get me those links, we would definitely yeah. have another Ranger stream. Um, yes. But thank you so much, Drew. And we, we, we hope you keep fighting the good fight of, uh, you said, multiple was it multiple scler multiple sclerosis yeah I have yeah, second yeah. phase multiple sclerosis so if they can't fix it then i just go on a decline you know i lose my mobility and well we want to keep I'm legally mobile, handicapped man. now so you know oh shit i gotta be tough but uh we we thank you and we appreciate you sincerely for coming up and with the list okay um but okay. We'll, we'll get you and brent up maybe we can schedule it uh with you and Brent where y'all can, you know, have, have y'all a moment where it's not like at, it's almost close to one o'clock where I'm at. So, okay. All right. Can I say one more thing? Go ahead. Real quick. Last word, Drew. Go ahead. Brent, this is for you. Now you tell me this, you love Austin so much. How much free stuff did Austin give you? Because when you talked last time, you said, Austin, I'm not going to buy any of your stuff until you get rid of your agent, Zach. Well, you're still paying for stuff. JDF would have hooked you up with the shirt, with the hat, took a picture with you. He made a video for me just out of the blue before I had to go through chemotherapy. And Henry, I'll send you that video. Send me that video, man. Yeah, I'll send you the video of me at JDF talking on there, man. It's, it's pretty cool. So, Brent, I challenge that. If you hung out with JDF, he'd have taken care of you, got in a convention for free, worked it with you. When's Austin done that for you? Oh, never. He, he never give will. You free tissue, man. He didn't give you free nothing. Him he or Walter will. didn't he give never you. Will. <laughs> give me two hundred dollars because I touched this tissue. See, and you want to be loyal to him? Come on, man. Come on. Why? Why are they? You guys are like Austin St. John's, like the Jim Jones of Power Rangers, man. You know, everybody's drinking special <laughs> Kool Aid, believe it. That. Oh, oh, he's great. He's Christ reincarnated. He's just, he's come. He's here. Oh he's shit. gonna bless us. He's he's gonna bless us with that power bless sword him, and, and put it on our shoulder. <laughs> and we're all gonna be able to ride the Tyrannosaurus Rex. Oh yes, we're all gonna glow red and have Power Ranger powers. He said it, so it's gotta be true. And Jason Abra Frank has told you, I'm a person. I was a TV show. I'm real, and you can come hang out with me. Damn. That's all he's ever said. Uh, but Austin's giving you the fairy tales of fairy tales, man. Thank you so much, Drew. You're man. welcome. That I'm gonna work on the videos tonight. I'm gonna see what I can come up with. See you. what you can come up with. Yeah. All right, man. that was Drew, everybody. God damn, boy. <laughs> damn, Jesus! I did not expect uh, Drew to come up.
uh, he did send me an email, a rather long email, which I read because when he said uh, he met them all three at the same time when he was 12, I was like, holy shit, this is the guy who emailed me. 